Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to make a button that can teleport all the players in the game to you. So these dummies in the background here are going to be my players. And whenever I click on this button right here, all the players teleport around me. We can also modify this. So if you don't want the players to teleport to you, but you'd rather them teleport to a separate location, we can do that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is add the button onto the screen. To do that, you can click on the UI button right here. After that, you're going to add a screen GUI. And then after that, you're going to add a text button. Go ahead and move that text button to wherever you want on the screen. I'm just gonna bring it down to the bottom left-hand corner. Over here in the Explorer menu, make sure your text button is selected. And then we're gonna go down in the Properties menu to the Text section. Right here is where you can change what the text says. So I'm gonna change it from button to teleport, but you can call it whatever you want to. And the only other thing that I'm gonna change is I'm going to select text scaled. You're welcome to go through the other properties and customize it, but this is all I'm gonna do for now. After we have that text button customized, we're going to click on the plus sign and then add a local script. Inside this local script, we're gonna start by saying local button, and this is gonna be equal to script, dot parent and then we're going to be passing some information from the local side to the server so we're going to need a remote event for that so inside of replicated storage go ahead and add a remote event and then after you add the remote event rename it to teleport event you can rename it by right clicking and then press rename okay so once you have the remote event renamed to teleport event we can continue on the script now so over here we're going to say button dot mouse button one click. We're gonna say colon connect. Inside here, we're gonna put function. Next to function, we're gonna put parentheses, and then we're gonna press enter. Inside this function, I want to trigger the remote event. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm just gonna say game dot replicated storage, because that's where the remote event is located. And then inside replicated storage, we're going to trigger the teleport event. And to do that, we're just gonna say colon and then fire server. All right, so that's all we have to do on the local side. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a script to the server script service. On this script, we're gonna say game dot replicated storage dot, and then the name of our event, which is teleport event. We're gonna say dot on server event, colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna put function and then more parentheses. With our mouse in between the last two set of parentheses, we're going to press enter. Now inside of this function, this is where we're gonna write the code to teleport all the players in the game to the owner. To do that, we're going to use a for loop. So we'll say for underscore comma, and then we'll do a shorthand for player. So we'll say PLR, then we're gonna say in pairs. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to loop through all the players in the game. So we'll say game dot players colon get children. So that'll get all the player objects in the game. What we're gonna do with those player objects is set their C frame equal to the owner C frame. And we can do that pretty easily by saying player, which we shorten to PLR dot character. So this will go to their model. And then inside the model, we're gonna say humanoid root part. And then from the humanoid root part, we're going to set the C frame. And we wanna set that equal to and I forgot we need to pass some information in here. So whenever this local event is triggered, it's going to pass the player who triggered it automatically. So the player who triggered it is going to be the owner. So over here, we're just gonna create a name for that player object that gets sent over from the local side. So since it's gonna be the owner, let's just use the word owner. Okay, so now continuing over here, we're going to set the player C frame equal to the owner C frame. So we're gonna say owner dot character and then just like before we're going to say dot humanoid root part and then dot c frame all right so that should be good we're going to be adding a few more things later on but this is enough to test on for now so what i'm going to do is to start a local server so that we can test it out all right so let's go ahead and test it out so obviously one thing we're going to have to fix is we only want this teleport button to show up for the owner but for now what it's going to do if i click on this side of the screen it's gonna teleport this player in the back to me. 
Alright, there we go. And if we had other players in the game, they would all teleport around me. Alright, so first let's set it up so that only the owner has the button. So to do that, we can go back to the local script. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say if game dot players dot local player dot name. And then we're going to say equal to. And here's where you're going to put the name of the owner. So in my case, since I'm testing on a local server, the two players are player one and player two. So let's just go and pick one of those. So I'll go ahead and choose player one. Okay, so if the player's name is equal to player one, we're going to make that person the owner. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the button visible for that person. So we'll say button dot visible is equal to true. And then we'll say else. So this is for everybody else. We're going to say button dot visible is equal to false. All right, so let's go ahead and test that. So only player one should have the button and then the other player in the game should not. Okay, and there we go. So you can see that I am player one on the left hand side here, and I have the button. And then player two over here does not have the button. Okay, and if you want to add other players, you can do it in a couple different ways. The most direct way of doing it would just be using an or statement. So you can say or, and then just repeat the same process, game dot players dot local player dot name. And then you can set that equal to something else. So let's just get the other player. So we can do player two. And then another thing you can do to shorten this up a little bit is put the local player inside of a variable. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just say local and then we'll do player. And that's going to be equal to what we wrote before. So game dot players dot local player. And then what we can do with that is we can replace it with this part right here. So the way you do it is up to you and both ways will work the same. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out now. So both player one and player two are set as owners. So they should both have that button. Okay, and there we go. So since player one and player two were set as owners in the script, they both have the teleport button. If you're gonna have more than one or two owners in the game, then you probably wanna store all the names inside of a table and then use a for loop to loop through and check the names. For now though, we'll just keep it simple and we'll add different names with an or statement. Okay, so the other thing we're going to take a look at is instead of teleporting everybody to the owner, let's teleport them to a certain location on the map. So to do that, I'm just going to insert a part. We'll drag it over here. So this is going to be the location they're going to spawn to. And what I'll do too is I'll just raise it off the ground a little bit. So there we go. And then what I'm going to do is take the parts position. So we're going to scroll down in the properties. And you're going to locate the section right here that says position. You're going to take these numbers and copy them. So control C. And then we're going to head back to the script on the server script service. And for now, I'm just going to paste these numbers so I have them available. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to change this part right here. So instead of teleporting to the owner's C frame, we want to teleport to this position right here. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new C frame. We're going to say C frame dot new. And then inside the parentheses here, we're going to put these numbers. So you can just click and drag them inside of here, or you can use copy paste. All right, so that should do it. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure it works. All right, so I see both buttons on the screen, but I'm not really concerned about that because we know how to change it in the script to modify it for certain players. So what I'm going to do is just on the left side here, I'm going to click on the teleport button and we can see that all players in the game spawn onto the brick. All right, and the last thing we're going to do before we end with this video is space out the players a little bit so they don't spawn on top of each other. So to do that, I'm going to create two additional variables inside the for loop. We're going to make an X offset and a Z offset. We don't have to worry about the Y offset because that controls the up and down direction. So let's just say local and then we'll say X offset. And that's going to be equal to math dot random. We'll just choose a random number. Let's choose between negative five and five. So this will be the number of studs they are away. And then we'll make a Z offset. So we'll say local Z offset. It's going to be equal to the same thing, math dot random. And we're going to choose between negative five and five. If you want to increase the space between the players, then you would just make the range between these two numbers larger. So you can do something like negative 10 to positive 10. So over here, all we're going to do is we're going to say plus and then X offset. And then for the third one, which is the Z part, we're going to say plus and then Z offset. 
All right, so let's go and try it out now. All right, so I loaded in a couple more players so that you can see how they're spaced out. So let's go ahead and click the button. And you can see they're not right on top of each other anymore. They're spaced out around the brick. If I wanted to be spaced out even more, I can do what I showed you before. So let's change this from negative 25 to positive 25. So what this is going to do is just going to make sure there's a little bit more space between the players. All right, so let's go and try it out now with the new changes. And you can see now they're much farther apart. You may not want this much space, so if you want to reduce a little bit, then go ahead and make those numbers a little bit smaller. All right, so I know I said the last thing was the last thing, but I thought one more thing might be helpful. If you want to be able to move this part around the map and not have to worry about getting new numbers for it each time, then what you can do is just rename it in the workspace. I'm choosing here, but you can name it whatever you want to, as long as you change it in the script as well. And then all you have to do is reference the part's position to teleport to. So to do that, we can say equal to, and then cframe, dot new. Here, we're going to take two different things. We're going to start with the parts position, which is going to be game dot workspace dot here. And this is the part here where you would change it if you chose a different name for your part. And then from that part, we're going to get its position. And then if you still want to use this offset, then what we're going to do is add a vector to this. So we'll say vector three dot new. Inside here, we're going to say x offset. And let me zoom out a little bit. So x offset, we're going to do comma zero, and then comma z offset. And then just make sure you have two parentheses at the end. All right, and that should do the same thing, but now I can move this part wherever I want to on the map, and it'll automatically grab the position from it. All right, so there we go. Everybody's in the game, and the part is back here in the corner. And then when I press the teleport button, everybody goes around this part here. If you don't want this part to show in the game, then you can just make it invisible by changing the transparency equal to 1. And then you also want to make sure the players can't run into this object, which you can do by changing can collide to off. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.